What is AJAX? Well, AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML, but what does that mean? Now, when I was first learning web development, I found the term AJAX to be particularly confusing. It seemed like some kind of library. Does it work with PHP? How do I install AJAX on my server? No, it turns out AJAX is none of those things. AJAX is merely a web development technique used in order to send and retrieve data in the background without refreshing a web page. Now to show you what I mean, let's start by taking a look at a real world Ajax example. And if we head over to twitter.com and open up our timeline, after some time has passed, you'll see a menu bar appear at the top of your screen indicating that new tweets are available. And if you wait even longer, you'll see that that number increases as more and more of the people you follow post something on Twitter. Note that our page never refreshes entirely, just that one menu bar. So to see what's going on in the background, let's open up our Chrome developer tools and take a look at the network tab. You can see that every 10 seconds, Twitter's web page is making a new request to its servers. And the purpose of that request is to ask whether there are any new tweets in your timeline. Again, notice that the page never refreshes. And that's because rather than loading the data through the typical browser HTTP request initiated via the URL bar, Ajax requests use JavaScript's XML HTTP request object in order to make HTTP requests behind the scenes. To illustrate this, if we open up the Chrome console and instantiate a new XML HTTP request object, saving it in the variable XHR, you can see that we have methods available such as open and send and set headers and set response, everything that you would normally see in a traditional HTTP request. Now, as far as the server is concerned, these requests made via JavaScript's XML HTTP request are identical to normal requests entered in the browser's URL bar. So with that primer on XHR requests, let's take a closer look at the request Twitter's website is making. And we can see that the request URL on the endpoint was being sent to twitter.com slash i slash timeline, and that the request contained a query string with a set of parameters composed count equals zero, include available features equals one. These parameters tell the Twitter server what type of information we're requesting, and the most relevant one for our purposes being the min position value, as this is the lowest Twitter ID to return. Now that we've analyzed the request, let's take a closer look at the response. If we select one of the requests that contain new tweets, we can see that Twitter's in fact sending back JSON data, Let's make it more readable by passing it through a JSON prettifier. A lot of this isn't of much interest, but the new tweets bar HTML key is what we want to focus on. It basically contains all the HTML of that new tweets bar that we saw earlier. So basically what happens is the JavaScript running on Twitter's website takes the JSON response, grabs the content of the new tweets bar HTML key, and then uses JavaScript in order to replace existing new tweets bar with the content it just received. And this entire process of making the request to the server and updating the page, with the response without reloading it is Ajax. Now that we've taken a look at how Twitter uses Ajax and their web application, let's go ahead and implement Ajax in a practical example. Now in a prior video, I made a really simple application called Geogram, which uses Google Maps and Instagram's REST APIs in order to display an Instagram image taken at your specific location. In its current state, once you load the page, that's it. In order to refresh the feed, you need to reload the entire page. So let's add some Ajax so that we can get that stream of images to update automatically every five seconds. We'll begin by opening up the code from the last video. And in order to simplify our structure, let's rename our geogram.php file to index.php. Now when we launch PHP's built-in web server, we can access our application at the localhost root of the port we specified, which in this case was 8,000. Turning now to the HTML markup, since we renamed our PHP file, first, let's go ahead and update our form submissions action attribute in order to point to the root instead of to our old geogram file. Next, let's wrap the image results of the div container and give it an ID of images. This gives our JavaScript an easily accessible location to add our new images. As new images are pulled in from Instagram, we will insert them into this div. Let's also make things easier on ourselves by adding the Instagram URL we're calling in PHP to a data attribute on our images div, and we'll call that URL. As you can see in a minute, we'll use JavaScript in order to grab this URL and pass it on to our Ajax request function. Looking at the bigger picture for a minute, when making an Ajax request to the Instagram API, we'd ideally want to request only those images that are new since our previous request. However, looking at the documentation for the Instagram API's media search endpoint, we can see that it does not support pagination parameters the way that Twitter does. Additionally, there's no pagination details returned in the response body. The endpoint does support the undocumented parameters, max timestamp and min timestamp. However, those are not exact and they seem to vary by blocks of up to 30 seconds. So what this means in practice is that there's no way to request only the new data. 
Therefore, for purposes of this demo, we'll simply repeat our original request and use JavaScript to identify which images are new and which images are already on the page. So turning back to our HTML, in order to make identifying new images easier on ourselves, let's set each image tag's ID attribute equal to the ID Instagram has assigned it. Now that our markup is ready, let's add the jQuery library to our application. jQuery is an immensely popular JavaScript library which makes manipulating HTML and making AJAX requests much simpler. To keep things simple, we'll load jQuery into our application by linking to the latest copy on a content delivery network. Now when the browser is rendering the page and reaches the script tag, it will go out and download the jQuery library and load it into memory so we can access its methods. Finally, let's add a script tag linking to a file where we'll put our custom JavaScript code. So let's create that script file and open it up in our editor and we'll begin by adding a function called its Ajax time. And inside, we'll first grab the URL from the aforementioned data URL attribute and store it in the variable URL. Then let's use jQuery's get JSON method in order to request that URL from Instagram. This get JSON method will make the XML HTTP request. And once completed, this callback function will be executed and the response to our API request will be contained in the data variable. To improve readability, let's just make a function call to a new function called add new images. We'll begin by looping through the response data using jQuery's each method. If you recall from the Instagram documentation, the images fonts are contained under the key data. So we'll say for each data dot data as index image. Then for each image, let's check and see if it's a new image. We'll do that by making sure the image ID is not already in our DOM by looking for a jQuery object with an ID attribute that matches the Instagram image ID. If that object doesn't exist, then its length will equal zero. Therefore, when its length equals zero, we'll add that image's details to our markup as a new image tag. We'll create our markup for the new image by creating a new jQuery object, which will fill with a combination of HTML markup and the results from our Ajax request. And then we'll use jQuery's prepend to method to add it to our main images container. For added style, let's hide the image first and then we'll fade it in. The only thing left to do is set up our app to refresh the feed every five seconds. To do that, we'll use the set interval function. Okay, let's load up our application and we can see looking at the networking tab in our developer tools that the XHR requests are firing every five seconds. Great. But wait a minute, why isn't the page updating? Looking over at the console, we can see we're getting an error message indicating that our local host isn't allowed access. Now that's because the XML HTTP request protocol has a same origin policy, which restricts loading data from a different host. Here, because we're trying to load data from api.instagram.com on HTTP slash local host, we violated that same origin policy. So here's the workaround. We simply add a callback query parameter to our Ajax request URL and give it a value of question mark. And if we reload the page, you can see that it's now updating every five seconds. But what just happened? To help you understand, let's open up our API request in the browser and add a query parameter of callback equals test. Now, as you can see, Instagram server sent back the same JSON response, but this time it was as a parameter of a function call. And as it should be no surprise that the function being called was test. This response format is what's known as JSON P and it's not subject to the same origin policy. But why is that? Well, the reason is because we're no longer making an XHR request. So the XHR policies don't apply. Looking at our application page again, you can see nothing is coming up in our XHR tab. And instead, if you look at the scripts tab, you see the requests are now coming up there instead. That's because when jQuery sees the callback parameter, rather than making an XHR request, it adds our API request URL as the source of an HTML script tag. Remember how we loaded the remote copy of the jQuery library that was hosted on jQuery's content delivery servers? That's exactly how these API requests are being sent as well. To illustrate this further, let's do exactly that and add our API URL as a script tag to our geograms HTML with a callback query parameter equal to test. Then we will create a new function called test that takes a parameter of JSON and adds that to the console log. Now, if we reload the page, sure enough, you can see that the JSON P response has been loaded into our document scripts and heading over to the console. Sure enough, we can see that our callback function test was executed by the JSON P response. Opening up some of the nodes, we can see our familiar Instagram API response. So that's what Ajax is all about. And as you can see, it can be a little confusing to beginners because everything we did in this video is Ajax, not just making the XHR or JSON P request, but also the entire process of updating the page without refreshing it in its entirety. So if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below or on Twitter at Ben Beerstrom. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.